All right, what's up? Welcome back. Here we're going to review the trades for Thursday. So today, market is closed on Friday or Good Friday. So four-day week. And um, yesterday, yesterday, mm, I was trying to you know read the market sentiment. Market sentiment yesterday was definitely not as hot as it was in the beginning of the week when we had um, GFAI and we had BFRG. Those two days were probably the hottest days we've had in a long time, but that momentum came in, was hot, and it seemed like it dissipated just as fast as it came. Um, today was very choppy. We didn't have much action. We had GFI come back but it was, it was a chop fest on GFI, um, and the spreads were really big. It was very, very hard to trade. Um, I don't think I traded at all uh, yesterday. We can take a look, but um, I mostly focused on FOA, which was a larger float. It was lacking news, so it really wasn't the best out there. I was kind of eyeing this breakout here at the open, of uh, the break of VWAP, as it was coming into the higher day i was really waiting for another candle for a pullback before that breakout because i didn't want to buy um so extended um off of the lows so you know it rose off of 73 closed breaking the vwap i didn't get in here yet because i'm still kind of judging whether this is an actual this is actually going to turn out to be a move here um because at this first candle was only 157,000 shares for the first one minute candle. So, you know, not quite signaling um, a lot of people ready to jump on yet. And then the next candle closes 654,000 shares. So now we're starting to get that volume coming in. I ended up taking a quick trade through the high, but I was very reluctant to get aggressive on FOA. I just didn't feel like it was an A plus setup, but um, it did end up making you know enough of a move to get some decent profit. Um, I tried to do a quick scalp underneath two. Um, got small green. Um, got some small green there. I didn't hold to the highs again here. I was waiting for a bigger pullback here, and I didn't want to really buy into two ten because I thought that would be a very aggressive buy. Um, buying after this candle, you know, you get some strength off of this dip. Um, so you're kind of seeing that uh, price could get bought up and break this previous high, but um, just the market sentiment, I didn't really see anything that was um, showing me that I should be getting aggressive into the highs. Um, so I did was a little bit patient. Um, I was really looking for maybe another red candle down to test the 90 MA before the, the pop-up. Um, but uh, originally, <clears throat> the best entry would be here off of risking off of 191, the pre-market high, trying to get in and maybe 193 to 195 and holding for that continuation move. That would probably would have been the best setup. After, if you missed that, you know, FOMOing into the high, that's a little aggressive on this candle here because we've only had three candles of price action and we're so extended already off of the 90 MA. So... <clears throat> Buying up here <coughs> could be a little bit too aggressive, depending on market sentiment. Today, I mean, yesterday, I was kind of judging it. You're not as hot as it was on Monday or Tuesday. So um, I didn't get in here. We did see a topping tail, and we had a little bit of a backside here. Basing out here, finding some support off of the pre-market levels and then ripping back up to the high. <clears throat> and I had a pretty decent trade um, here, but again, I was still very reluctant. Um, I wasn't ready to just jump on on the first sign of buying um, just because of the market sentiment. I can pull up the trades. So originally, yeah, I was looking at CNSP um, it had a low float, had some good pre-market volume. So I was thinking we could see CNSP. It was also cheap, so I thought maybe we could see a, a bigger move on it. So 
there goes FOA for that that breakout. Then we consolidate, and then this move here. Oh, this was DeFi. DeFi was so choppy. And then this move here. FOA. This is probably one of the better moves on FOA. On the I mean on the day, at least in the morning. But uh, we pop up. We got some nice volume coming in here. We close right under view up. So you know I'm not quite gonna get in, but you could put in a starter for the break of two. Um, you know that could be a setup for the break of two, as long as you're closing above VWAP. We could see shorts getting squeezed here. So right there would have been the entry for their break of two. And then boom, we're up to 202, 203. Here, I probably would have <laughs> ended up taking profits. I wouldn't have been adding to the high. That's a little aggressive given the market sentiment. Um, not so, you know, very strong yet or anymore. As in, it's not really that strong. Um, you know, I probably would have taken profits up in this area. But, you know, this is the type of stock. It's just like you think it's going to pull back and it just inches up a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. It never gives you that awesome pullback that gives you that awesome risk reward. And so here, you know, this this is a, probably a negative risk reward. But I do put in a starter or just 100 shares because, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe it just can give a move just like what happened here. You know, we break over VWAP and it just slowly rising up into the pre-market high never really gives you that clean pullback to get that solid risk reward trade and so i'm thinking that's what's going to happen here we have high volume coming in close near the high so that's a good sign i do take it off um because i want to see what's going to happen with this next candle if we're going to get a pullback we don't get that pullback and so i'm looking for the break at 210 It looks like we struggled to break 210 there, so I did take it off. This is just a starter share size. Okay, this could be a good dip. And at 205, let's see if I hold this or if I take it off. And we got some selling pressure coming in, so I take that off break even, kind of managing my downside risk. There we go, that's kind of what I was looking for, um, buying up the low of that candle. So I'm getting in back in for the break at 210, which was, you could see that block of sellers. So you're really the starter should have been down here. This I should have held that or tried to get filled a little lower when I did come down. I didn't get filled there. But that would have been a good starter. And then now you're adding for the 210, break at 210 since you got that block of sellers. So clear resistance here at 210. If we can break that, then, then uh, we're looking at the highs. So... 35,000 shares. You see that get chipped away pretty quickly, but you'd had you'd have enough time to um, put in a buy order right at 210. It's right there. Get filled. Just 200 shares. Take take half off there for a four cent gain. And we're holding. Looks like we're holding. We got buyers baiting this up. We have buyers coming at 215. That's that's um. Like it's, it's, it's sort of strange how, you know, this for just, just a short period of time, you have aggressive price action and then, um, the rest of the time is just very weak. We don't get that clean continuation and here I'm adding into the highs there and taking it off on the break, but that was a very, very nice move. Very aggressive two minutes there. And, uh, you're going to see from here on out. I tried doing a dip off the low there, but I didn't get filled again. And we never really get that that continuation, you know, in a strong market. We're going to see this nice move, this strong move. We're going to see some consolidation, pull back to the 90 MA, and then we're going to see a strong green candle all the way back up to 225, breaking 225 up to 250, and then breaking, pull back, break 250 up to 260 and 270. Maybe you get another five minute consolidation, gearing up for that next push to three dollars, and then we break three, we're up to three ten, three twenty. We never really got that in FOA, uh, and the float was a little bit larger. Um, 
but I mean, it was only 30 minute, 30 million um, float. So, you know, not so big to where it can't make a move, but we did have some sort of moments, maybe about three minutes of price action, of strong, aggressive price action to get some solid gains. Here, IFRX, I was actually eyeing this, but you know, I never really, it just took so long to, to squeeze out. I was looking for that break at $6. We did end up getting it, but it was just look, it popped up and then it faded from there. But that was pretty much it. That was my main trade of the day, FOA. And I was able to get, I think I made 50 bucks on FOA. So that put me from red 25 on the day or 20 on the day. I was like red 20 on the day from pre-market to green 33 on the day. So not too shabby. My accuracy, this is very interesting. Usually I have a positive accuracy and a an even one-to-one -one risk reward or a slightly positive risk reward. But today I actually had a negative win loss ratio which is so rare to have an for me for me for my strategy it's so rare to have a negative win loss ratio and a positive um positive risk reward so i actually ended up green and my average win was double my average loss nearly double my average loss my largest losing trade was only five dollars that is the beauty of mastering that risk management and knowing the setups where to size into and the setups were to take, you know, smaller size. Um, I think I did really good with managing my risk on the day with having 22 losing trades, 22 losing trades, and my larger loss was only five dollars. I didn't size into any any of those losing trades. I put in a starter, didn't work out, I cut it. I put in a starter, didn't work out, cut it. Put in a starter, didn't work out, cut it. That one trade on FOA, I put in that starter and it held and I added it into the highs and I quadrupled my share size into the high um, in confirmation, got that breakout, taking it off and I was able to make 50 bucks on that and, and able to completely erase those 22 losers on the day. Um, I did also have some small winners as well. But uh, those are also small scalp trades that didn't really have much continuation. Um, pretty much scratch trades, more or less. But yeah, that was my statistics. And very rare to see that sort of day for me to have a negative win loss ratio and ending green on the day. But uh, yeah, that's the beauty of, of risk management. Uh, keeping those losses small, especially if you can read, if you can really master reading market sentiment. The first, the first thing, the first thing that's most important is getting a profitable strategy, becoming proven profitable, profitable trader over weeks and months, and knowing that your skill set and your and your <clears throat> strategy produces income. The second. Most important thing is reading market sentiment because that strategy is not going to be profitable in every single type of market and it's not going to be profitable 100% of the time. So if you can become a master at reading that market sentiment every single day, which changes every single day, sometimes within the day it changes. It can change from hour to hour or even from morning to the afternoon. If you can read that market sentiment and be a master at that, then you can know when your strategy performs best and you can size up into those time frames into those moments that the market is most suitable for your strategy and then size down when the market is not favorable towards your strategy and yet that can come even as as precise reading that sentiment is as precise as looking at each stock like how is each stock going to perform in the market relative, you know, looking at its volume and at its float ratio. The volume to float ratio is important. The news catalyst, um, that's also very important. Being a master at reading at that and actually gauging the potential volatility of that stock. 
Um, and then after that, you know, you're reading the overall market sentiment um, as well. But yeah, it can come even as pre precise as the individual, the individual name and reading, um, you know, volume to float ratio and also, um, you know, potential short squeezes on the daily chart. You know, where's the daily chart resistance? Where can we potentially have a short squeeze? Reading traps. Um, if shorts are trapped, um, that's also, you know, part of reading market sentiment. Um, it's actually, I guess you can call it ticker sentiment because um, each ticker, ticker will have its kind of different sentiment based upon the price action and the volume to float ratio and also the news catalyst. So that's also very important as well. But that also, that comes after having that proven, con, proven profitable strategy and proven skill set to making money because if you don't have that strategy then reading market sentiment ain't gonna do nothing for you but yeah if you the the key is the probably the most important of market sentiment if you're looking now closer at market sentiment is managing of course managing that downside risk knowing when to size down because if you're sizing up in a market if you're taking big size in a market that isn't producing profitable results or is break even um, you can be taking, you know, bigger and bigger losses, and then that's going to fuel that emotion to size up or average down to a losing position. And that can spell disaster. You can really erase a lot of that hard work that you've been putting in. So, you know, reading that market sentiment is so, so important. And reading like the ticker sentiment, like so precise, um, you know, with each setup, knowing which setup to size into, that's also very important. You know, for a quick scalps, you know, you may not want to size up as much as you would in quality A plus setup, a five minute breakout or a one minute, a one minute bull flag after a clean five minute breakout. You know, those are gonna be maybe some of the A plus setups that I look for, that I like to size in a little bit more. But those quick one second trades, they're kind of volatility scalps. Um, are not something that maybe I would size into 100%, like fully sizing into because um, that they're, they're really quick trades. It's not something that I can kind of size into. It's just something I got to take one, tr one, en one entry and one exit, take my profit and get out. Um, so usually on those trades, I won't be taking my biggest size. My, usually my biggest size are the ones that I'm adding into winners. So uh, that's also important to, to know which setup to size into and which setups to take your starter and only use your starter or only take, you know, a certain percentage of your max size and then which setups to take your max size and really maximize your profit because the favors, the, the odds are in your favor. So yeah, that's it uh, with on Friday, I do want to take a look. I didn't take a look on my statistics on, I think it was on Tuesday where I had that $320 day, um, which, man, that really saved my week. My week um, actually wasn't too bad, but uh, I was more or less break even on the week. So we had Thursday 33, so about $34 on the day, $28 red day on Wednesday. That was the day with BURU. That was probably the best setup, BURU, but I just didn't get aggressive because it. I didn't get in off the lows before it broke VWAP, and then as it broke VWAP, it kind of went immediately to that um, opening range candle, that first one-minute candle, and you had to get aggressive into that into that area, and um, I just felt like it was a little shaky. Like, I just felt like you know, you could have had that rejection and my risk reward ratio would have been a little bit off. Um, it had to have been like an immediate breakout or bail. But uh, you know, I should have I should have taken that um, into the high at least with small share size, and I could have actually probably ended up green on Wednesday uh, um, with Buru. But um, you know, I'm just managing my risk. You know, it, it it's a setup that um, um, when it works, it can be very very profitable but when it fails and you get that rejection um, into that open opening range 
and, you, and it fails back to the lows, you can get a pretty nasty flush because uh, it's, it's a confirming backside rejection. And so then you get even more shorts piling in uh, looking for that continuation to the downside versus a flush that's you know already on its front side. You can get that, you can get more of like a support coming in from the bulls because it's still on a front side move on the larger time frames. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a different, it's a different type of trade, you know, off the lows, catching that, uh, view up breakouts, uh, for Baru, but you know, I'll take a small red day any day, you know, it's, I can easily, you know, easily recoverable. It's nothing, something that, you know, I can't make that. Uh, but Tuesday, uh, nice green day. And then Monday, pretty much a scratch on Monday, which, you know, was all right. But if you average all this out, pretty much this day cancels this day and that day. So I pretty much end up with 325 on the week, which isn't too bad. Um, which isn't too bad. Uh, now, the largest winning trade on Wednesday was 102. 5%. 5%. Pretty nice trade there. Uh, my accuracy Right on, right on point. I want to be right between 60 and 65 percent um, is usually the sweet spot for me. Anything over 65 percent actually is a red flag. Anything over 65, let's say anything over 70 percent um, um, winning ratio, uh, winning percentage is actually a red flag. And I know that sounds kind of weird. You know, you want you want to maximize your winning percentage. But usually when I have a very high accuracy, it means that I'm cutting, it means that I'm cutting my uh, winners too fast. I'm not letting my winners run enough. And it's causing me to take, you know, like 20 or 30 one cent winners. And then I'll maybe have one loss that's like a 10 cent loss. And I give back all that, all those gains. So I'll have like 20 winners and one loss. So I'll have like a, okay, let's say 10 winners for a one cent winner and then one loss for a 10 cent loss. That's a 90% win ratio, but I'm gonna be flat on the day or even small rip. So usually when my winners are very high, I'm not letting my winners run enough. Uh, when my winning percentage is very high, I'm not letting my winners run enough. Uh, because naturally, you know, some of those winners that you're you're letting run will come back and you'll stop out for a break even or for a small loss, which is okay. But um, um, the one that does keep going, it usually turns out to a big win. And that completely more than enough makes up for that one or two times that comes back to, you know, break even. And even still, you're taking a break even trade, which isn't which isn't terrible at all. It actually means that you're managing your risk quite well and you're trying to let your winners run. Um, so, you know, when I'm doing that, then I'll have more of like, a, I'm finding I'll have more of like a, a solid uh, 55 to 65% win percentage. But yeah, when I have 80% winning percentage, it usually means there's something wrong with my risk, rate, risk, risk reward ratio and I'm cutting my winners too, too fast. So I'll just have like a million one cent winners and then one loss. That'll kind of wipe that out. So my sweet spot is between 60, 55 and 65%. Uh, on most of my big green days, I'll have a 55 to 65% win ratio, maybe 70% win ratio occasionally. But anything over 70% is usually a red flag for me actually. Um, so 324 on the days, 69% um, Profit margin, two to one uh, risk reward. So that's really, really good. And I actually sized down on my largest losing trade. I had a 6% loss on my largest losing trade. That's re that's bigger than my largest winning trade. And my average loss is bigger percentage-wise than my average win. But because I know I'm, I'm realizing what to not size into I'm not sizing into a loser and maybe I'll give it a little breathing room because it's just a starter position so it does cause me to have a little bit bigger of a loss um, than normal but because it's a small share size it's just my starter size it's only $23 it's only a $23 loss and so that's really really good if it was 
this share size that I used on my largest winning trade and I had a 6% loss, I would be red on the day or close to red on the day, maybe near flat. And I wouldn't have a solid uh, win loss ratio. So, you know, looking at a percentage wise on your risk reward doesn't tell the full story. You don't want to just judge off percentage because, you know, it's okay to have a little bit of a higher percentage uh, loser as long as it's on small share size. If you're on small share size, you know, it's okay to kind of let the trade breathe a little bit because you're, there's low stakes. And as long as the, your thesis is holding up and, you know, let's say you want, let's say your, your stop is um, below the 90 MA and it's right on the 90 MA and maybe you're, um, you want to let it breathe a little bit, you're down five or 10 cents on a two dollar stock so that that would mean you're down maybe five percent on a two dollar stock but you're still kind of on that 90 ma and you're waiting to kind of get that confirmation for support coming in off the 90 ma and catching that next breakout for the continuation it's okay to kind of let that starter breathe a little bit and then when you get that confirmation you can kind of add into it uh, but if it doesn't work out you know you cut for you cut it um Maybe a five or six percent loss on a starter size, but you know that'll be so small because you're only using a starter size. So you know, just the percentage alone won't tell you enough. I actually like to judge uh, judge upon the dollar amount for my for my risk reward ratio um, because it factors in the strategy, the sizing strategy part of uh, your trading, and that's also very important. You don't want to. I mean, at least for me, like I don't, I don't take the same share size for every single trade. Um, I I judge everything based upon um, each setup. Uh, will be each setup will be a different share size for the most part. So that's why uh, the percentage just wouldn't work in my case. But for someone who does just like just the same share size across the board for every single trade. Then percentage would probably be would probably be you know the best um, because each trade will have an equal weight. Uh, but you know for someone who has a variable share size, um, this does not uh, this does not tell the full story. Uh, this is more so accurate the eight to four for the two to one uh, risk reward. So overall, pretty good stats, pretty good stats, and you know. I did a long video uh, on Tuesday about that. You guys can check that out. Um, it'll probably be in the recommended or the recent video section, whatever on the side, um, which I talk about uh, that day and go over the trades. But that was pretty much it. Um, for my overall, let's take a look at my, actually, I want to take a look at my running p &L. Let's take a look at my running PL. So this was actually went from green to red there. And then this one on Tuesday. Nice, nice. Here kind of just went red, made a little bit back, and then I called it. Um, a lot of the times when I when I do have red days, I can make a good chunk back before I call it, but I never quite make everything back. But it it, it feels good, you know, to make back a little bit of profits because then you feel like, okay. I'm in a better position than when I was, so it's a lot easier to walk away rather than you know stopping when you're where it seems like you're at your max. Uh, and then here I was actually right on the day yesterday, and then flipped green for that trade with FOA. So um, that was good. And let's take a look here at the overall. Uh, my overall uh, chart. By the way, you guys can check out Trade Journal completely for free. Um, the link will be in the description. You can sign up um, and you guys can uh, journal your trades and it's um, very helpful. If you guys don't have a trade, trading journal or analytic software, check out, definitely check out Trade Journal. I think, I think it's probably uh, I think it offers the best value on the market for sure. Okay, anyways, let's go to, let's zoom out. Where was I at here? Okay, 
Oh, that's, let's do this here. Okay. So we can take off the trading volume. We can trade, take off the per day. This is the nominal PNL is like per day profit. You can see like my per day profits. Actually, let's take a look at this. My per day profits in the beginning, you know, very small green, small red, small green, small red, big red, big red when I'm still learning, big red. And then I recover that loss over time. And then I start sizing up into, into profitable stats and I'm doing great. And then, you know, the market slows down and then I'm back to like small green, small red, but, you know, bigger than it was. And now recently, you know, having a big spike, you know, that could be a sign that market could be coming back. We'll see um, if I can, you know, have some bigger days than I've had back here. Um, but, it, you know, we'll have to see what, see what comes in the future. Uh, here's my overall cumulative PL. So kind of since October of last year, kind of started to not have that much of a of an incline. It started to kind of level out, still going, still going up, but kind of not as not as sharp. Um, you know, I have a couple pops here and there. I had a section here between January to February. I had like a twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollar a month so that kind of um caused it to go up a little bit stronger and then it started to level out again in march pretty much very small green in march only like a hundred dollars in february only a couple hundred dollars in february and then you can see that one little jump there that was from tuesday um had the 325 dollar day so made pretty much entire of February in one day and three times of March in one day. So, I mean, if that can continue, then I ain't complaining and I can size up more into that and have a, even a stronger front side than I did back here because of the new experience, um, you know, kind of cum accumulating into better knowledge in the markets. I can, uh, you know, be more confident in my trading and size more into that. Um, so, it takes time, but um, you know I'm still pushing at it every single day. Hope you guys are doing the same. Uh, and that's it. That's really all I wanted to go all over today for the review of yesterday and my statistics. Um, so I'm happy with um, you know the week and gonna enjoy the weekend. Come back next week and hopefully we get some more momentum in the market, some more opportunity. It seems like we're getting um, you know a jump in volume here. Uh, the overall market is kind of on an uptrend again. Well, not quite on an uptrend, but we had a couple of green days in the overall market, which kind of sparked a little bit of momentum uh, on some of these small caps. We had GCTK after hours, after hours yesterday, from one dollar to two point six. Um, so that's a good sign that momentum is kind of still lingering in here in the background. Occasionally, we'll get a pop here and there. So maybe. We'll have like a perfect storm next week and um, we'll have like a solid stock with a low float with a nice catalyst that makes a big move and, and keeps that momentum going. That's what I'm hoping. Um, but uh, till then, I'm just going to enjoy my weekend. So hope you guys enjoy your weekend. If you guys are still watching, please hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe if you're not a yet subscriber and check out the links down below. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.